we define by dt. And now we say, aha, what we have on the left side is now work per unit time. That's power, joules per second. So this now is power. dq dt is current. How many coulombs per second flow? So this is current, I. And the potential difference I simply call, I use that symbol, V. So you see now here that the power delivered by a power supply is the current that it produces times the potential difference. And this is independent of Ohm's law. This always holds. If you also include Ohm's law, if you can use it, last time we discussed the limitations of Ohm's law, but if you can use it and V equals IR, then of course you can also write down for the power that it is I square R and it is also V squared divided by R. Power is joules per second, but we write for that joules per second, we write for that watts, just a capital W, but it's named after the physicist Watt. So we always express the power in terms of watts. So suppose we have a resistance R, and we run a current through it. This is the resistance, and we run a current I through it. And let us take an example that the current I is one ampere, and that the resistance is 100 ohm. Then the power which is dissipated in this resistor has to be provided by your battery. That power P is now 100 watts. I square R, you want to use this. If it is two amperes, and you don't change the resistance, then it becomes 400 watts. Because it's I square R. I doubles, the power becomes four times higher. Now this energy is dissipated in the form of heat. And if it gets hot enough, then maybe you can produce light. That's the idea behind a light bulb. The filament into, in a tungsten incandescent light bulb becomes very high, 25 100 degrees centigrade, maybe even 3,000. Not so high, of course, that the tungsten melts. And so you begin to see light. So, for instance, a 100 watt light bulb. Oh, let's work on here. So, if we have a 100 watt light bulb in your dormitory, and the voltage is 110 volts, you just plug it into the wall, then the current that will run is about 0.9 amperes. P equals VI. This product must be 100. And then the resistance that you have is about 120 ohms. V equals IR. So even though it's quite hot, a light bulb, the amount of light that it produces is in general not more than 20% of this power. It's not a very efficient thing in the incandescent light bulb. A fluorescent tube is much better. So if you have a 40 watt fluorescent tube, you get much more light than you get out of a 40 watt incandescent bulb. If we take your heaters that you have in your dormitories, Typically 2 kilowatts, but let's make it 2200 watts, because that divides nicely through the 110 volts. So then you would have 20 amperes. That's a lot of amperes. If the dormitory is very old, chances are that your fuses will go. 20 amperes is more than many houses can handle. But nowadays, I think most outlets are good for 20 five amperes or so, but not for much more. And so now you have a resistor in your heater, which is about 5.5 ohms. 
just to give you a feeling for some numbers. Now, you want heat out of your heater and you want light out of your light bulb. So you want to keep the temperature of your heater modest, not so high that you get a lot of light. If you make it 2,000 or 2,500 degrees, then you would get a lot of light out of your heater. And so suppose that half of that power would come out in terms of light, and you turn on your heater at night, would be like having a 1,000 watt light bulb in your dormitory. You don't want that. So how do you do? What do you do now? Well, you simply keep the temperature about maybe 1,000 degrees centigrade. It gets a little red hot. But very little light is produced. And how do you keep the temperature low? Well, you could cool it with air. Some of these heaters have fans that cool them. Or you just make the resistance, you do both, very large, huge surface area of the resistance, not small, but large. And so now they have a large surface area so they can radiate their heat and so the temperature remains low. So if you look at your things that you have at home, you have light bulbs, 40 to 200 watts, your toaster, maybe 300 watts, your cooking plates and your heaters, something like 2 kilowatts, your TV, a few hundred watts, your electric toothbrush, probably only 4 watts, very modest. Your own body produces about 100 watts heat, of course that's energy. You have a very large surface area, so you don't get nearly as hot as a 100 watt light bulb, because your surface area is large. And so you only have a modest 98 degrees Fahrenheit, unless you're running a fever. So you don't produce any light, because you're not hot enough for that. So you produce infrared radiation. That's very noticeable. You hold someone in your arms, the good feeling is you feel the body heat. That's the infrared radiation. That radiates at about 100 joules per second, 100 watts. An electric blanket is only 50 watts. So a partner is about twice as effective as an electric blanket. Maybe also more fun. The power delivered by a battery is the current that the battery delivers times E, which is this EMF. And so when a current is running, it is I squared times the sum of the two resistances, the external one plus the internal one. You can never bypass that. The heat that is produced in the external one is I square capital R, but the heat that is produced inside the battery is I square little r. You can't avoid that. And so if you make R zero by shorting out the battery, then you get a current, which is the maximum current that you can get, which is the EMF divided by R of I, so you've killed the capital R, it's zero now. And so 